Hey everyone, it's Dark Frank here from Madai Miniatures, and today I'm gonna be converting, well, wrong side or wrong way around, this into this, a somewhat of a Cylon looking hover car. So if you are interested how I made it, please keep on watching. And zoom. So we have the car. Yeah, it's a custom 18 Ford Mustang GT. I like this car and there is, you know, like a piece of it that it moves. That's actually front spoiler, which is completely anticlimactic. <laughs> yeah, there are no opening doors, nothing. But as well, I have this piece, yeah? And this is from Necron Destroyer. It is actually a 3D printed piece, so... Mm, not exactly, because you can see, you know, the ridges and everything. But, you know, like, I was thinking, maybe, maybe... I can cut it into pieces and attach this to the car, yeah? So, let's grab the saw. And I want to disassemble it from here. Yeah, this is a resin so I don't want to do too much mess I think it was originally green resin not sure yeah it was a green resin you can see the green inside but you know this is supposed to be a back of the Necron Destroyer but I was thinking this way around yeah it's gonna create this kind of devilish fish kind of shape. Yeah, and now this one. It isn't gonna be so easy because this already is tilting. Come on. Be a good boy. No. Not enough cut, so I'm gonna cut it and be right back. Here I have the second part. Unfortunately, during the process, I did kind of destroy the jet engines, but well, who we'll say that they have to be pressed in? So, again, I, got, I want to glue it like that. Yeah, it's gonna create this nice, like I said, a little bit devil fish or whatever looking shape. My clip first now. Like that and like that. And you know, like the damaged thrusters can be explained by uh, pl platera of things, you know, hitting someone, being hit by someone, uh, being shot shooting, you know, something, whatever. Yeah, there is always a good explanation in Gaslands for something being mangled on your car. Yep, so now, yeah, it looks good. Mm. I'm of two minds, you know, about removing the wheels. Maybe this is a hybrid build when, you know, you can use the wheels and you can fly as well so i will actually leave the wheels in place it's gonna make it faster for me to build and it's gonna be more versatile in the gas lab. so that's okay let's just grab this and back for any contact good contact points yeah because i don't know where the contact point is going to be here. As well, you know, I want to use this vents to cover the windows. So this is working. Yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. This is going to give me nice connection. So again, just a thrashes amount of super glue. And there we go. And, you know, I have this piece of Necron body sitting on my desk for half a year now. 
I was just thinking, what are they gonna use it for? Yeah. Okay, this started looking like one of the Cylon ships. I didn't even, even think about that, but that's okay. That's okay. Cylons are okay. <laughs> Not really. Uh, flamethrower, where to put it? I. Like, I'm thinking about some weapon, not necessarily flamethrower. But I'm running out of 3D printed pieces, yeah? And I really don't want to put the 3D printer on when I have one day to going, you know, abroad to visit my parents. So, come on. Since I'm already using Necrons, maybe a Gauss weapon? Just attach on the hood. Yeah. So let's just cut off the hand. Because that ain't gonna be necessary. And of course the axe is completely unnecessary. And this bit can just go like that. And that's gonna be my weapon. Just need to flatten it a bit. Because there is a nibbly nobly piece that would normally be connecting to the other hand. Yeah, that's gonna be it. Alright, and I want some armor plating and of course, like always, I'm gonna be using my diamond plating because it just looks cool, yeah? No matter what, what materials you are working with, you know, with the diamond plating, really looks cool when you work with it. Yeah, other stuff is cool, but this is cooler. And I'm thinking about making a, what do you call it? English come back to me. You know how you have the roof uh, kind of wavy. Uh, Oh, I'm struggling with English today. I'm sorry about that. Uh, like the containers are made of this wavy, um, wavy sheets of metal. Yeah. So I was thinking about making maker for that for the scale of gas lamps, because when you take the cardboard and you have the um, ribs there, yeah, it's sort of still kind of too big. Yeah. It's almost, it could be count as in scale, but it is too big, even if you have the very fine one. Oh, come on, I have a hair stuck to my finger. But uh, if you would take a piece of, okay, it just broke off, lovely. Everything just works in my, to my advantage today. If you would just take a piece of uh, wood and glue toothpicks on it, with just enough space for one and a half extra toothpick. At least that's what I'm thinking, you know? And if you're gonna take a second one and do exactly the same, and then you can put pieces of uh, soda cans, just plaster in between them. And this is gonna create for you this... Uh, uh, not perforated. <sighs> this wavy you know, piece of metal, yeah? That's gonna be perfect for gas lamps, I think, you know, size-wise. And I know that they could probably 3D print something that would work the same. But all the 3D printing is, it's cool, but it can again retract from your belts, yeah? Sometimes doing stuff manually without using 3D printer is good as well. Are you gonna be... Yeah, it, it's gonna be problematic. So let's get it out, get the super glue again. And hope for a better connection this time around. And you know, in Dragon video, I was already running out of baking soda. Right now, I have just a tiny amount of it. And I think that I'm gonna have to use it. Yeah. 
Ach, come on, come on. Diamond sheet as a base, so I don't gonna lose the tiny amount of baking soda that I have left. <laughs> this is beyond ridiculous. It really doesn't want to connect. Maybe I should have keep, kept the hot glue gun out. And you know, to make sure, I'm just gonna reinforce this one as well with a little bit of baking soda because since one broke off, I assume that the other is gonna try to do the same at some stage. Now I can get this tiny bit back. All right. <coughs> oh, okay. And I have this bit. It's probably Necron as well in nature. Not sure. Yeah, but since I'm going all out Necron, why not? I just want to put it over this yeah, and I don't know what it's gonna be why why would it be attached to the car I just want it there and I think that the Necron bits you know the the side pieces and everything would make it so you know hitting the driver would be near impossible from sides and from the front as well not that easy. I just want to cut out this bit. It's just hanging. Yeah. I'm just looking at it, and you know, like it's a very simple build. There is not much complication to it. Just the wings that don't want to hold at all. Yeah. But I think it is done. Well, almost done. Almost. I have one of those bits, and I think about putting this on the. Hood. Yeah, but not standing up, just lying down. It's gonna be probably some sort of a battery extra or whatever. But this one is done as far as conversion comes. So now I'm gonna white bomb it, yeah, and be right back with you. And here it is, nicely covered in white. Yeah, and you can see how much of a mess I have on my desk. Other cars are falling into the screen. <laughs> uh, when I'm almost done, I have only one more Gaslands video to do today. And I'm gonna be done. And I'm gonna be almost ready to go abroad. And you know, like, I was looking at the piece, you know that I have the, this Necron backside because you know like I have plenty of Necron warriors that are in extreme disrepair and they 3D printed that to kind of fix them up yeah. and then you know I started looking at it and it was like you know oh, I don't like it because it was I printed it into a uh, little bit too chunky that's why you can see the like basically the piece was designed so the voxels or whatever you call the pieces was actually visible on the bed yeah it wasn't very smooth and you know i just have like four of them 3d printed they are just laying in the box somewhere but this one was you know one that i have left on the desk and i was like but it's gonna be really cool for Gaslands. So. You know, 
maybe not perfectly in Necron build, <laughs> but definitely somewhat Necron inspired. Of course, I don't know that there is a pink Necron dynasty. If anyone knows, please let me know. Yeah. I like the idea of Necrons, but for so many years the miniatures was so bad. Yeah, just warriors, basically your Terminator knockoffs. Yeah. And then you have what? Uh, right, I think. The, the, just the collection, the collecting Necrons, you know, back when I was really into 40k, was disastrous. The, the minis didn't look good. Even Tau have better minis than Necrons. And that says something. Yeah. And now you can see that those 3D printed pieces for Necrons do actually come in handy for me. You know, I like how this old, very old pink paint covers on the white, yeah? It's very nice, chalky, pastel -y. Of course, we know that cars should be, you know, more of a... Mm, let me find the word. Gloss looking. But for me, this is just perfect, you know. Ladies found a chalky paint and just use it yeah, to unify the team somewhat yeah so that works for me you know just my own little you know background so yeah I still have two windows which you know desperately requires paint so regal blue like usually yeah and just Add it with a big brush. Yeah. And I know that I should probably use a smaller brush, but changing brushes during Gaslands projects is a hassle. Yeah, and if you can I'm I'm always you know the big believer in this that the bigger the brush you can use the better for you. Because you're gonna cut the time that it usually takes you to paint the model in half if you just use like twice as big brush. Yeah. So just a little bit of ice blue. And of course, you know, with bigger brush, you have chance for bigger mistakes. And, you know, when they happen, they happen, you know, what can you do? But for example, let's say that you are painting with a size two brush and to be a completely honest, size 2 or size 3 would be some of my favorite brushes. But when you switch to size 4, you straight away put more paint into the brush, which means that you're getting stuff done faster. So, okay, I'm gonna now allow this to dry and paint the pieces that I need black. And here it is, everything I wanted is undercut black. So, again, you know, very... Uh, targeted dry brushing and, you know normally I usually go you know with the Necron weapons kind of bluish greenish or orangish but today I am just leaving the metallic as I really do not have that much time to finish this video Let's go, let's go. And you know, even those destroyed engine bits, they look okay, you know, you can always explain that very easy that it was battle damage. Yeah. Next, just looking at that. Some more here, some more 
here and just a tiny bit more here yeah and that's it from the dry brushing let's grab some weathering colors rusting first yeah because there's gonna be some rust and I'm already scared about how much of the baking soda I have left yeah and brown I know I was thinking that I actually throw it out but I still have this bottle left and still have some paint in it I just misplaced it so badly that I couldn't find it so yay and you know just the remaining little bits of baking soda let's go why do I use brown? I wanted to use red. Uh, my brain is somewhere else. That's not even the red I wanted to use. Awesome. That's the red I wanted to use. So orange and red. Yeah. A little bit of red, little bit of orange, some baking soda. And I, you know, the, the rust is going to be here. Yeah, because I already used baking soda for that bit, yeah, to glue them together. Then, you know, this is the only real necessary spot to do the rust. Yeah, and like in here, you don't even have to go with the, uh, what do you call it? With baking soda as a roast because there is already baking soda in there and yeah, the same here just a little bit yeah and you know places where the scratches may occur come on i know that i still have a little bit there i can throw it in here and in here and that's enough for my scratching you know roasting in here and now, of course, I have the brown out and I need some beige. I really hope that there is still some beige in that one. Because, you know, this approach of using just a couple of colors all the time is working to my advantage. Slowly I'm getting rid of colors. No, this one is done. Okay, instead of beige, I'm gonna be using a Elf Flesh, which I think that I have like five different bottles of. So it is more leathery, but still gonna probably work for that. So brown and leathery, and even red now. And I want to dirty it up here. Okay. Not so much. And of course the bottom of the car. I should probably start from this every single time just to get the feel for the uh, for the color. Yeah. But yeah, it's nice, it's dirty, it's how it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna dry it off, throw it on the spin table and be right back. And here we have it, a pink monstrosity of a mixture of Necron and human technology. Yeah? It's very, like I said, for me it's very Cylon-esque. Yeah? And there's not much to say about it, you know, I like it. I like that, you know, that I actually even like the mistake that I broke the engines somewhat. It works. Yeah, it is armored enough. It has some, you know, cool gadgets on top and a big gun in the front. Yeah, uh, some sort of energy weapon. So yeah, if you like it, please rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, family and strangers and, you know, do all of that stuff for me. I really appreciate it. And of course, since this is the end of the video, have a lovely day, everyone. Take care.